All right, so sometimes you're gonna have all these different quadrilaterals plotted on a coordinate plane. So some things you need to remember. You need to remember how to find the slope of a line. You need to know how the slopes of lines compare. You need to know how the slopes of perpendicular lines compare. How to find the midpoint of a line. How to find the length of a line using the distance formula. And the properties of special quadrilaterals. So the slope. So you use the points at each end of the line to find the slope. So given any two points, you're going to label them x1 and y1, x2 and y2. Plug them into the slope formula, which you should remember, which is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 equals x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And then the number of fraction you end up with is the slope of the line. The slope of the line is equivalent to the length of the, or excuse me, the slopes you can use to compare to see if they're parallel or perpendicular. So sl slopes of parallel lines are exactly the same. So if you end up with two slopes that are the same, that means that those two lines are parallel. So if the opposite sides of a quadrilateral on a coordinate plane are parallelogram, both sets, then you can prove, you can show that at least you have a par parallelogram. Slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. This means that if a line has a slope of two-thirds, the line that's perpendicular will have a slope of negative three-halves. It's the opposite sign and the fraction is flipped over. That's what reciprocal means. So you use this to determine whether or not the corners of a quadrilateral are 90 degrees or if the diagonals are perpendicular. So if you use the slopes of all four lines and you see that every other one is the opposite reciprocal of the one before it, that means those corners all meet at 90 degree angles and you're talking about a rectangle or a square. Okay. Then you've got your midpoint formula. The formula for your midpoint is x sub 2 plus x sub 1 over 2, so it's the average of your x values, and at y sub 2 plus y sub 1 over 2, so it's the average of your y values. You can find the midpoint, you can use that to figure out if the diagonals are bisecting each other. So you're going to end up with a point, not just one value. So you take your two x values, average them to find a, a middle x value, you take your two y values, average them to find your middle y value, and you end up with a point. So again, if, the, if two diagonals have the exact same midpoint, that means they bisect each other. Another formula you're going to need to use is the distance formula. Okay? The distance between two points is the length of the line created by the end of those two points. So your distance formula is you take your difference between your x values and square that number, and you add that to the difference between your y values squared, and you take the square root of the whole thing. Okay? So that is what would give you the length of each of the lines. So you're going to use the distance formula to verify that opposite sides are congruent, which would mean a parallelogram, or that diagonals are congruent, which would verify a rectangle or a square, or if consecutive sides are congruent, or if all four sides are congruent. So you're looking for square or rhombus if all four sides are congruent, and if you just have two sets of consecutive sides congruent, you have a kite. So you'll use distance formula a lot. All right, so the last thing I said you need to know is all the properties of your different quadrilaterals. So you use this information you get from the slopes, distance, midpoint to determine what shape you have. So like I used in the example of distance formula, if all four sides are congruent, you're talking about a square or rhombus. Then you would check the slopes to see if you've got some opposite reciprocals to see if the angles are at 90 degrees. So determine what shape you have, you write down all four points. Plot them if they're not already given in a graph. Determine the slope of each line. And then use the information from the slopes to make a decision about what test to run next. So if you have two sets of parallel lines, check for a rhombus, rectangle, or square. So an example. Okay, so given the point, A is at negative 2, negative 1, B is at negative 1, 2, C is at 4, 5, and D is at 2, negative 1, what type of quadrilateral do you have? So if they weren't already plotted for you, I would plot them and connect all the dots. And I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, I don't think that that's any particular shape, but if anything, it might be a kite. So then I'm, I said step one is connect the dots, graph it, see what you have. Then you're going to use the distance and midpoint formula. So I'm going to see if two consecutive sides are congruent using the distance formula. So I'm just going to check the side AB and the side AD and see if they're the same length. 
And what I get is that one of them is square root of 10 and the other one equals four. That means they are not equal in length, so there's no way this guy is a kite. Obviously those aren't equal in length and those aren't equal in length, so it's not a kite. It doesn't look like anything is parallel, but we could certainly check if AB was parallel to DC. And if we take a look, you would go up three and over one, and that is parallel to each other. And then D, or excuse me, and that, so that's a slope of three over one. And this is a slope of six over two, which reduces to three over one. So we have exactly one set of parallel lines. So that means that what we have for this one is a trapezoid. one set parallel lines because your slope here is 3 over 1 and your slope here is 3 over 1. So That means that we have a trapezoid because of one set of parallel lines. In the next example I have the point W at negative 2, 2 x at 1, negative 3, y at 6, 0, and z at 3, 5. So what type of quadrilateral do we have? So again, you're going to plot the points and connect the dots. Kind of looks like it could be a square. So I'm going to check for that by seeing if all four sides are the exact same length. If these slopes, and then I'm going to check all the slopes of the lines to see if I have parallel lines here and perpendicular lines here. So if we take a look at this, I'm going to focus on my distance formula first. I used my distance formula in my point, so I used the points W and X to plug into my distance formula, and I got square root of 34. Then I used the points W and point Z to plug in, and I get square root of 34. Then I used the point Z and point Y to plug in and get the square root of 34, and I plug in X and Y to my distance formula, and I got the square root of 34. So all four sides are the same length, so I at least have a rhombus. At the very minimum, I have a rhombus. Then I use the slope formula. And what I get for the slopes is, three, is 5 over negative 3, and then positive 3 over 5. That means those two sides are perpendicular to each other. Then 3 over 5 and negative 5 over 3, it's flipped, it's opposite signs, those are perpendicular. Then negative 5 over 3, 3 over 5, perpendicular. We're seeing a pattern here. I have it at least 3, probably 4, perpendicular lines, which means every corner is 90 degrees. So this means since all sides are the same length, consecutive slopes are opposite reciprocals, this shape is a square.